If you're watching the news, you know that violence is once again gripping Israelis and Palestinians with another day of protest over America's decision to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It may lead many here in America to wonder what is behind this latest violence and the anger and an animosity, animosity that have existed for so long in that region. A tri-state native, Sycamore grad, Michael Basson, got a rare look into both worlds. He documented his journey in his new book, I Am Not a Spy, and Michael is back home visiting, and he's with us here on Good Morning Cincinnati. Welcome, welcome home. Thank you so welcome much. Welcome to the show. It's so great to good be to here. meet you. You know, I, I I want to start with that situation now because I think people here just cannot understand why this hatred goes back so long. What was your experience with that when you were there, Michael? When I, so I spent a, a variety of uh, a time in a lot of different places in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And basically what I saw is that there is no one way of looking at the conflict, mm -hmm. depending on whether you're an Israeli or a Palestinian or someone from the Gulf. Uh, there are a lot of different types of moving facets, and as a result, the chances for peace are much greater with, uh, between Israel and certain parts of the Arab world, and much less at this stage with, unfortunately, with the Palestinians. Yeah, and that's erupting right now. You're seeing that. What do you think when you see what's happening right now? What I see, uh, unfortunately, is a lot of desperation on the part of Hamas in Gaza. Uh, Hamas right now is very isolated. We're in a time when, of course, Israel is experiencing much more fruitful ties with other Arab countries and is obviously embedding its relationship with the United States. And uh, also Israel has been very successful at thwarting Palestinian attacks from Gaza by means of rockets and uh, underground tunnels. And kind of as a last resort, Hamas is now cynically using its own civilian population to launch human wave attacks against the Israeli border. It's basically taking tens of thousands of people, interspersing gunmen, people armed with bombs, uh, Molotov cocktails, and cynically unleashing them on the, on the population, knowing that when people die, it's going to be a public relations victory for Hamas. When, when you went over there, you were a junior in college, you went to study abroad yeah. uh, at, at the American University in the Middle East, in the yeah. United Arab Emirates. Sharjah. Yeah, Sharjah. What, um, how, did, how did you look at things when you went, and how quickly did your view change? So when I went to the American University of Sharjah and the American University of Cairo, uh, I decided to be open about my Jewish identity uh, and the fact that I was a you know, proud American Jew. And the response was actually a lot of shock, suspicion. People thought I was a spy because they'd never had any exposure to Jews, people with alternative kinds of opinions. What I basically found was that despite the fact that people might be raised with a certain narrative and might be raised uh, incurring lots of propaganda and uh, hatred. The fact is that when two people from totally disparate cultures are able to sit together in a room, get to know each other face to face, it's very, very difficult to hate a human face. It's very easy for people to adopt and start try to understand each other's story. And due to those reasons, I do believe that reconciliation and peace is possible in the region. Okay, and that's reflected in your book, I Am Not a Spy. It's a hopeful it, book, yeah, 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 I assure yeah, you. Yeah, yeah but it, it, at the same time, you, you're pretty honest about that it didn't always work out that way and that subsequently the title I'm not a spy sure everybody thought you were a spy that's true <laughs> well where the when I, the reason why my experiences in the Middle East were so sensational is because there actually was a large contingent of students that really did hate my guts and actually really encouraged other students not to interact with me not to talk to me but the problem is regardless of where you're from regardless how old you are if someone tells you not to do something, what are you going to do? do you do the opposite. Yeah. So that made me an instant celebrity. I made a lot of friends over there. I, uh, what, I, what I really understood was that it's not so simple as to say, oh, Jew, Arab, uh, Christian, Muslim, uh, yeah. you know, Israeli, Palestinian, anything like that. Put people in a box. Yeah, right. look, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, varying views. There's a lot of, the Middle East is a very, very wide territory. There's a lot of controversy. There's a lot of different conflicts going on. I do think it's a mistake to think that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is the main reason for all the instability in the Middle East. It's definitely one of the reasons. And uh, but at the same time, despite a lot of the cynical violence, I think that radicals always react uh, horrendously when change is on the cusp. Yeah. And today you do see a lot of change going on in the Middle East. I think change for the better. And despite the tragedy of this violence, and I'm, I'm very, very remorseful of the numerous people that have been yeah. killed in the past couple of days, the reality is I do believe that there are better days ahead of us. Do you, do you think the U.S. has contributed to any of the violence? And is there anything the U.S. can do to contribute to peace? The U.S. can definitely contribute to peace. I think that it's great for the U.S. to be an honest broker. I think it's great for them to uh, put pressure on various parties to enter into negotiations. Uh, you know, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, of Israel, uh, he 
uh, has always always says that he's his office his door is open for Mahmoud Abbas to enter into negotiations. Uh, and I think the United States can definitely facilitate that by being a broker. But at the same time, you know, you also need to have. Uh, a strengthened Palestinian side. You need to have uh, a Palestinian people that are united and also have made the decision that they really do want to approach negotiations. Um, I don't think that the uh, the opening of the U.S. embassy in Jerusalem is the cause for the violence. I think it's kind of the opposite. I think that the Hamas has seen this as being an opportunity to get a lot, grab a lot of attention uh, dur during like this uh, commemoration. Mm. And I think it's very sad because. Uh, the Gazans do live a very, very uh, impoverished life. They yeah. suffer a lot from authoritarianism. And uh, this is just a reflection of the misery that's been imposed on them. Well, this is a very uh, 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 interesting first-person look at what's happening over there uh, from somebody who experienced it. I uh, hope you read uh, it. Yeah. 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 Well, Michael, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right.